Bien. They've been riding together since the start of the rally and they're still together with a few days to go. Here are the Morels, father and son. Alain, 19 years of age, is competing on his first Dakar while Antoine, 40 years old, is enjoying his ninth appearance as a competitor. And Antoine's first aim is to help and take care of his son in all situations. I always want to see him in my rear view mirror so I can always check him out. Well, it's been rather good so far, Antoine. Still lost contact with his son, explaining that he went backwards 30 or 40 k's to look for his son. With all his experience, Antoine is a good coach, but above all is a father and can be sometimes quite hard with his son. Beginning of the rally, he was uh, having a tumble a day when he saw the helicopter. He was going 10 k's faster. He's young, he wants to do well, so I had to calm him down. But now it's better. And Alain is uh, not yelled at all the time. His father is also his best ally. I'm very lucky to have my father supporting me, advising me, helping me when I'm in trouble. It already happened that uh, he went backwards to come and help me, and vice versa. Well, sometimes I say to myself, in what crazy event did I take my son? So many things can happen. I wonder if it was a good idea to take him to this Dakar. But there are some very nice moments as well. We've done stages side by side and I was looking at him and thinking, wow, this is my son here, it's absolutely great. Even greater is when they get to the end of the special together, as always, after difficult stages, here on the finish line of the Zwerat Attar stage. Congratulations by a race official. I'm very proud of my son, says Antoine, because he went on well to it uh, today. He listened to all my advice, went well through the dunes, and we're here tonight. Well, even better, they should be together in Dakar this weekend. And so to the car race, Luc Alphonse started in first position this morning, just today after capturing the overall leadership. But the Frenchman certainly had in mind what happened to his Mitsubishi teammate and former leader Stéphane Pétencel yesterday. With three stages to go, Alphonse needed to avoid trouble, but also had to keep an eye out on his closest rival. Janil de Villiers, only 20 minutes behind. Well, the former skiing World Cup winner enjoyed a fine day. Not only did he beat the South African, he also captured his second special win of the rally, his fifth success on a Dakar. Luc Alphon looking very impressive in his Mitsubishi Pajero Evo 4. Janil de Villiers in his Volkswagen race to Warwick did his best to try and catch up Alphonse, but that was just not good enough. On his way to Senegal, the South African had trouble with navigation, failing to find a waypoint. He eventually finished third on the day, losing one minute and 42 seconds on Luc Alphonse. Still two days to go for De Villiers, but he's 22 minutes and 13 seconds behind. And amazing sceneries here as well in the Nyokolokoba National Park. Nani Roma, third overall. His goal was probably only to make it safe and sound to the finish line. He doesn't really has to have to worry about the man behind him in the overall. Peter Hansel, close to an hour and a half behind. And he can't really hope to catch up De Villiers over an hour ahead. Roma finished fifth today at over 11 minutes. And here we are with a big loser of yesterday, 
the title holder, the winner of the last two events, Stefan Petit-Roncel. He took off 60th this morning. Just imagine he had to overtake a lot of competitors. He eventually finished in 13th position, losing 16 minutes. He's fourth overall. Mark Miller had problems with a rear wheel. He also lost time today. He finished way behind, over half an hour behind. Carlos Souza in his Nissan pickup. The pickup that uh, Ginald de Villiers was uh, driving yesterday. And here we are with Mark Miller and his co-driver. And here's the problem the American had today, the Baja 501,000 winner. Looking for a tool to try and repair a rear wheel. Not good. Mark Miller's now 3 hours and 33 minutes behind on the day. Losing half an hour because of that incident. Jean-Louis Schlisser, he too probably wants to make it safely and sound uh, to the finish line on the shores of the Lac Rose. He finished well behind all the others today, 10th. 29 minutes adrift. Probably satisfied with his uh, stage victory on the Dakar. Back with Carlos Souza, the Portuguese driver, who finished second of the first special back home on the way to Portimao. And here we are with Bruno Sabi, a winner of the event back in the 90s. Finished fourth today, 10 minutes adrift. He's eighth overall over eight hours behind. Carlos Sainz also suffered problems today. He crossed the finish line, well, still in second position, but suffered a puncture and had to stop. Thierry Magnaldi, winner of two stages so far on the Dakar, took it easily as well. He finished sixth today, 14 minutes behind. And it was a very bad day for Guerlain. She schied seconds yesterday, his best ever performance. Well, today, it really didn't go well. He broke a wheel while driving. Here we are with Jose Maria Servia. Spain that they are at kilometer 57. Everything is going fine so far. The road is uh, quite tricky, very slippery. So we want to take care of the car. We need to drive very carefully. Jose Maria Servia driving a V6 engine Schlesser buggy compared to the V8 engine buggies of Magnaldi and Schlesser. Here we are with Frenchman Raté. He leads the T2 production class. Explain that uh, he's very careful because he has a nice overall lead in the T2 class over four hours. Lots of traps today, holes. We're always in the dust. We have to remain cool. Well, Rate is 17th overall and leader of the T2 class. He'll be satisfied with that. The end of the special. Alphonse shaking hands with his main rival, Janil de Villiers. So, victory number two for Luc Alphon ahead of Spaniard Carlos Sainz. Only 50 seconds adrift. Daniel de Villiers is third, close to two minutes behind. Alphon now has a 22 minute 13 second advantage on de Villiers in the overall standings. Roma is third. It was a real nice stage to drive, says Alphon. Technical, fantastic. But all those tree stones, I had a big scare at a moment. After a water crossing, I drove over a big rock, which I saw too late. It was not too quick, but still, I was tense, and I'm still tense. Tomorrow will be a stage that I know better, and we have a 22-minute advantage. We saw his dust uh, sort of in the middle of the stage, and then uh, in the one village we had to go back because the GPS did not click, and I had to go back and I have to go into the bush, basically where you cannot go, so uh, I was a little bit like an elephant looking for uh, the GPS point, but uh, okay, we got it, so we had to get it, otherwise, you know, you get a penalty, and then uh, we tried to push as hard as we can, but uh, yeah, no, he, he drove uh, very well today.
A complicated uh, day, says the color science for us, because we started behind and we got a lot of dust, especially when we were behind the buggy, Benyaldi. Out of that, we had a puncture, but then we didn't have problems until the finish line. Do the truck race now. And the winning run of Hans Stacy continues. Again, the Dutchman captured victory on this special, going from Labe to Tambacunda, a fourth victory in a row for Hans Stacy, looking very impressive in his man truck. Well, Stacey eventually beat Kabirov by 13 minutes, while Vladimir Chagin pushing hard there. The overall leader had to settle with third position. Over half an hour behind. That's not too much of a problem for the Russian four-time winner. He still has a two-hour and 30-minute advantage on Hans Stacey in the overall standing. The little truck of Japan's Sugawara he finished eighth today. Yoshimaza Sugawara. Still losing over an hour. And here we are with Italy's Paolo Barilla. Andre the Azevedo with his uh, seriously damaged Tatra truck. He damaged it yesterday during the special. Well, it still hasn't been repaired. The Azevedo finished fifth today. He's fourth overall. Tomorrow, penultimate stage of the Dakar, the last real one before the shores of the Lac Rose on Sunday. Stage 14 takes the competitors from Tambacunda to Senegal's capital, Dakar. 254 kilometers of time, special. Enough for mistakes and changes in the standings. Well, that's it from today's stage 13. All our thoughts are for Bubukar Diallo, who was hit by a car and tragically died today. A young 